you wake up as a samurai with no weapons in an unknown world. This will be my first playthrough of Elden Ring. However, this will also be a challenge run. I have no weapons aside from one very special weapon. So at the start, I go and skip the both the tutorial bosses, and I look around. I go and I go to the first Sight of Grace, and I allot my Estus, or my Flask of Crimson Tears, and I use my starting gift, the Golden Seed, to get a new charge, and I leave. At the start, I'm still figuring out a little everything, so it's a little slow, but I go up the elevator, and I start the first step. I go to Limgrave, and I go to the first side of Grace, and that's when we meet our first NPC. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however... After telling me I get literally zero bitches, he then tells me to go to Stormvale Castle to get said bitches. However, I have a different plan. I need to go get a weapon. A weapon that I can only use for this run. No other weapons, just this one weapon. And so I go to go look for it. And at this time, I do not know where it is. So I will journey to try and find it all alone, aimlessly in an open world game, so it took a while, to say the least. I do leave and I come across this samurai guy who's pretty cool. He's got a metal hat and a really big katana, and uh, hopefully we'll see him more throughout the game. He tells me to beware of a dragon, and I don't go anywhere near the lake, because I'm looking for the web. I go off this edge, because I thought I could make it. That was my first death, and here's my second death. And then after that, I decided to actually look for the whip. I go past Tree Sentinel, and I just run away, because I can't fight him. I don't think I could even fight him with the whip, to be honest. And I follow the yellow brick road leading to the wonderful whip. After a while of roaming, I find the Bridge of Sacrifice. It's filled with a bunch of just random enemies with swords and a ballista, of course. And I just book it past them, keep going until I find a Shrine of Grace. I sit at it, and then I notice another NPC. Hello? Is somebody there? My head injury is going to make this my name with the ring. I was so sent out from Mara. Thank you. 
And with that, Irina tasks us with finding her father and giving her the letter. Now, her father is at Castle Morn, and that is exactly where we need to go to find our web. On the way, we encounter a Dark Souls 3 reference by a archer shooting incredibly large arrows at us. And it seems that the archer is a giant golem, giant creature, just like in Dark Souls 3, but clearly he's no golf, so we make short work and just run past him. We find a site of Lost Grace, we activate it, or discover it, and sit at it, make sure we can respawn there, go up the elevator, and we finally enter Castle Morn, the location of the whip. I run through Castle Morn past all enemies, of course I cannot attack them, so why bother? I find another site of grace. I jump down off the cliff sides for a while, and then I find a big tower with open raptors. I scale said raptors and enter a dark room filled with rats. And in the dark room, I find the whip. And then afterwards, I die by the rats. It's unfortunate, but at least we got the weapon, and at least now the real run can begin. I equip the whip, try it out a little bit, and next I will test it on the rats. Clearly the whip is just as impressive in any Dark Souls games as it is here. It's quite a, quite a weapon. A PvE master, if you will. I make short work of the rats without losing much Estus. And I enter my first boss, Leonine Misbegotten. And do an incredible amount of damage to him. Absolutely absurd how strong this whip is. And then I die. However, I notice with the whip that it has a stun mechanic, as you can see, and that'll come up later. Don't you worry. Eventually, I kill my first boss and get the Grafted Blade Greatsword, a weapon that I really wish I could use. I enter the Church of Ella, and I use a smithing table to reinforce my whip. Then I meet Santa Claus, or maybe the Grinch. By that face. It's up to you. Next I find a caravan of knights and I kill them. After that I loot the caravan for all their items and sit at the side of grace. A maiden appears, and we decide to form a bond. She gives us the steed whistle. Now we can ride horses and level up. We go through Stormgate and fight some monsters, a giant. Then we discover this shack with someone Who in it. Who is this? Hello, hello. For me, the legs taken and stuck to the spider. She gives us an emote and some jellyfish ashes. 
She tells us about the chrysalids of her former men in Stormvale Castle, and we make a note about it. She decides to ask us to deliver a message to them. We say yes, but then we head to Castle Morn to go see Irina's dad. He gives us a sacrificial twig, and we give him Irina's letter. Next, we fight a giant crab and decide after that to head back to the Bridge of Sacrifice to meet Irina. Yikes. After that, we decide to avenge Irina by killing the soldiers in the Bridge of Sacrifice. After that, we go exploring and find a dagger dog protecting the bridge. We make short work of him and decide to keep on exploring. We come across our first Erd tree and we fight its avatar. This is, will be our second boss battle, and the whip makes short work of him yet again. After that, I take a tower and open up its chest. And it's a transporter trap, taking us to who knows where. Oh, of course, it's Lindell Royal Capital. We fight this and lose hard. We find a glowing tree, we activate it, and we follow this gold person into a cave. Inside said cave, we find this giant bear. Oh, of course, it's Rune Bear with his small head. He doesn't appreciate that, and he kills us, so we kill him. After that, we head into Morn Tunnel, we get some smithing stones, and we decide to fight the boss of the area. He's... He's something. The whip makes short work of him, and we get another weapon I wish I could use. However, this boss arena is very good screenshot material. After that, we head back to the Church of Ella. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch Rena. We meet Rena, the witch, and she gives us a bell right before she decides to blip out of existence. After that, I upgrade my whip and decide to tackle the tree sentinel. The whip is just demolishing bosses, and we're proud for it. After that, I find a church where we discover a item called a Sacred Tear. Then we find another church with another item called Sacred Tear. After that, we enter the Shadow Realm where we fight a boss. The whip does its stun mechanic thing again. And again, we're proud for it. We love to see it. I defeat the boss and get the Scar Seal. After that, we find Kronos from God of War, but Bell form. We decide to clear the skulls from his feet, and he's not too happy about that, so he kills us. But we get to open him up, and we find our Remembrance Duplication, whatever that means. We fight this thing, find her. Then we find a merchant, we buy the lantern. After that, we head to Stormvale Castle for the boss. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. I'm going to be honest, this boss kicked my ass. Absolute most frustrating boss so far. Probably one of the more harder bosses to fight with the whip, if you ask me. But we did eventually beat him, and it was quite epic to destroy the fell omen.
After that, the maiden decides to take us to the round table, the hub of the area where we'll find the blacksmith and some other NPCs who are on the nicer side of the game. However, we'll also find some edgier NPCs. We talk to the blacksmith and upgrade our weapon before going into the next room and discovering someone very special to us. Via. Brave champion, would you allow me to hold you? Oh, my thanks. You are very We let Via hug us because we really need it in these trying times, and we agree to hug her again sometime. Then we perform a Dark Souls reference at the campfire for some screenshot material again. After that, we decide to clear Stormvale Castle. We come across a dark room. Oh. Cutscene. Just like any Dark Souls game, we become trapped in this room with a powerful enemy because someone thought it'd be funny. A certain NPC, I assume. We clear the enemy and we progress. We go to the main gate of Stormvale Castle. We decide to just book it across all the enemies. We come across a very powerful lion with a dagger, but he cannot follow us to this invisible wall. I decide to cheese him and kill him because this being a whip only run, I'm willing to do anything necessary to beat it. We come across a giant bridge filled with giants, and again, this being a whip only run, I cannot critical hit, so I just run past these enemies. Fighting them would be pointless. We come across a divine tower, but I cannot open the door, so I leave. We fight the grafted scion boss, but we win because now I have a weapon. We get the chrysalid's memento for the girl, and we leave. We fight through Stormvale Castle. And we come across a site of grace where I decide to head back to Stormhill Shack. I find the girl and I give her the messages. She's grateful, she begins to reminisce, and she decides to ultimately head back to the round table with us. I think I'll head to the barn. Perhaps I'll find my pet blue things. My name is Roderica. I should have told you sooner. We talk to Rodrika, and she's grateful, and she gives us a golden seed, a very, very useful item. Next, we talk to the blacksmith, we fix our weapon, and we talk about Rodrika. But her boy, she's crestfallen and can scarcely say she has a gift. We talk to Rodrika about becoming a potential spirit tuner, and she begins to think about it. After that, we jump off the balcony in the round table and we enter an arena of sorts where we become invaded by Mad Tongue Albrecht. The whip makes very short work of him and we love to see it, as you can see. I'm just unlocking him! I'm just unlocking him! <laughs> we go back to Stormvale Definitely Castle and we go through a fog wall. Please, please. is that? Oh no. Why does that look like Margaret? We begin the fight with Godric the Grafted, and he destroys us our first go. We don't even get a hit in, but on the second run, we go to the second phase. Godric just, uh... I think he hit second phase. Bro, what is this? I die several times as I learn the layout of this boss, and he's a very good boss. 
some some would say even the best in the game, and I would definitely attest to that. He is a very fun boss, and he is not too difficult with his whip run, surprisingly. No! Woo! Yes! I did it. Upon killing him, we get a great rune similar to the great souls we get in Dark Souls 1 to beat the game. After that, we sit on the throne that we earned for killing Godric. Screenshot material. After that, we head in and see this thing. It's no framped, it's something. The finger reader. That, oh, that's gross. After that, we unlock boss weapons. Next, we decide to talk to some older NPCs and even some newer ones. Whoa. Oh, Mama, who are you? I've not seen you here before. I am Nefeli Lou, warrior. Nefeli Lou. The Fae of Mana, as a fellow hound, guided by Grit. You have received the wisdom of the Chieftain, and then just as promised, I bid you welcome. I am known as Gideon Ofnir, and the time is too vicious to stand before the... Gideon Ofnir tells us of a bunch of great lords we must slay to get greater runes to get the Elden Ring. Very similar to Dark Souls 1, but we love it. Godric de Grafted being the first of the lords we must slay. After that, we talk to him about his lovely daughter, Nefeli. And after that, we begin exploring on our mighty steed. We come across a dark cave that we cannot enter for some unknown reason. There's a fog wall that blocks the cave. Usually a fog wall means that there's an invasion. However, I'm in offline mode. Invaded by Bloody Finger Niger... N Niger? Mary Jess? Who are you? Mm. Bloody finger hunter, you're a summoned. What is you and your blood? Who the hell is this? If you remember, we met Yura earlier through the run. He was trying to protect us from a dragon, and now he's protecting us from a bloody finger with his powerful washing bowl. Thanks, bro. After that, we find Yura up ahead, sitting in a cave. Hello, sir. Hunter of the Bloody Fingers. Next we go through the cave and we come across a boss room with no boss in it, strangely enough. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Son of a bitch.
Okay. He gave up. I didn't even kill him. He said, hey, wait, wait, wait. Stop, please. Dude, forgive and forget. I love you, Patches. And after that, we come across a Bloodborne reminiscent dungeon. We pull a lever that opens up a door somewhere, just like in a Bloodborne dungeon. Somewhere, a heavy door has opened. Grave Warden Duelist. Oh my gosh. This dude's huge. We encounter and fight the boss of said dungeon, and we make short work of him with the whip. Easy. Not even hard, not even hard, not even hard. After that, we come across another Dark Souls reference in the form of a painting. And finally, after that, we head back to the round table hold to talk to the blacksmith. And we also hug Mommy goodnight because it's two in the morning. Well, that's the end of the first video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite a struggle of my first day playing Elden Ring using only the whip. This was the first playthrough I've ever done, and it is very time consuming, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you're excited for the second video that will be coming soon. Thank you for watching.